Hi everyone, today I'm going to bring you an article that was originally written by Corbin Dallas on the um, Stolen History platform. Ditch Tesla by Badcock runabout for 1,244 miles on one battery in 1909. How many electric car models do you know over the top of your head? Probably three or four if you are really into it. Maybe ten. Though I'm not even sure there are ten contemporary electric car models out there. Well, in the beginning of the 20th century, there were hundreds of different models. A few of those models you can observe in the attachments representing just one 1907 catalog. In reality, there were many more. I mean like way more. Appears 100 years ago electric cars were a pretty common sight on the streets. I have heard that there were electric cars back then, but not to this degree. Many of those cars have a range comparable to their today's counterparts. 1908 Fritsch Hill Model A Victoria had the exact same range as 2010 Nissan Leaf. Then in 1909, the Fritschley Electric Coupe toured 2,140 miles from Lincoln, New York, to Washington, D.C. through 10 states. This electric automobile averaged 90 miles per day of travel, advertising claims 100 miles per charge. In 1916, Fritschley announced a gasoline electric automobile with a four-cylinder air-cooled engine. They sold very few and the following year abandoned all production. I do not really know what to think about the below. Route of the 1,244-mile tour through Illinois on one battery in a $1,600 Babcock runabout. The original is being kept at the New York Public Library. I will base my opinion on more comprehensible distances. Well, the very first electric car supposedly was presented by Siemens and Halski in 1882, and those early electric cars looked neat but very primitive. It also appears that most body styles were derived from those available in horse-drawn carriages, and with all this visual simplicity, these vehicles had ranges we were only able to mass-produce in the 21st century. Let us take a look at the battery-powering 2010 Nissan LEAF, which is equal in range to 1908 Fritschley Model A Victoria. Number of battery models in a Nissan LEAF 48, number of cells per model 4, weight of pack 300 kilograms, amount of lithium in the pack 4 grams, 192 laminated prismatic cells, 360 volt nominal voltage. 1908 Fritschley Model A Victoria had a 28 cell lead acid battery weighing 400-600 pounds. I was not able to find a picture of the Fritschley battery, but apparently it was powerful enough to tow an Oldsmobile. And the below letter of appreciation from a grateful customer speaks volumes. The Fritschley batteries generally lasted for more than 10,000 miles and could be replaced at a cost of $208. The cars were advertised and trademarked as a 100-mile Fritschley Electrics, and they lived up to this claim. Another feature of the Fritschley was a regeneration system in which the motor became a generator when the car was coasting downhill, thereby partly recharging the batteries. Yes, the max speed of 1908 Fritschley Model A Victoria was only 22 miles per hour. Nissan Leaf is also a heavier 3,300 pounds versus 2,100 pounds for 1908 Fritschley Model A Victoria. But we are talking about 1908. Today's battery makers have over a hundred years of scientific R&D experience on those from the late 19th, early 20th century, and we are still at about 350 miles per charge. Those people from over a century back 
with their extremely limited scientific base, were able to achieve similar things we are enjoying today. Where did this ahead of its time technology come from? I do not believe there was sufficient time for the natural research-based development for this quality level of power storage in 1900s. Such a sharp technological contrast between the simplicity of the vehicle body and the durability of the power unit suggests different levels of development. It's like the technology just fell into someone's lap. But in a way of documentation, or a whole warehouse full of batteries. What about the infrastructure required for production of all these electric cars? The catalog above probably contains 5% of all the electric cars produced at the time. Just pick the below list. And those are electric cars only. Ugly crooked wooden utility poles and dirt streets next to beautiful colonial buildings. Ridiculous sails on gigantic 700 feet long iron ships. High quality pneumatic train cars replaced by benches on wheels. And many other things. All these are indicators of the unknown factor silently existing in our most recent past. The pneumatic train and electric car technologies quickly went away. Official reasons were similar. Not profitable. Not enough customers. Semi-official reason, gas sales bring more money. I think the real reason was that gifted technology without sufficient understanding is prone to being lost. They simply were unable to do anything with it. It's so easy to explain everything by an industrial revolution excuse. We were dumb and stupid for centuries and all over a sudden everyone got smart at the same time. But only these little big mismatches stick out. They are only visible if you look, for if you don't, they are invisible. Well, camouflaged by the fake historical nonsense they are, our society prefers not to see all the contradictions hiding in the mysterious 19th century and recent history in general. I wonder why.